Hey there, it's Steve from Serious Keto. And over the last couple of weeks, not a day has gone by that I haven't gotten an email, a direct message, or a comment on one of my videos about another video that came out, I believe on July 21st, making the claim that if you freeze white bread, just commercial white bread, then thaw it and then toast it, it turns the flour in that bread into a resistant starch. Now this video was put out by one of the YouTube chiropractors that does a lot of the life hack type videos or home remedy type videos. No, not that one. This one right here. And as I watched the video, I just, it, it didn't feel right to me. This notion that if you freeze bread and then thaw it and then toast it, that you're going to have less of a glucose response that it's going to feed your gut microbiome and give you all kinds of healthy benefits there, including potentially blunting, further blunting a glucose response. Just all of my experience, all of my testing with resistant starch told me no. So I took a look at the article that was referenced in this video out on PubMed. This is it right here. This is the full content right here. So not overflowing with information. Let me read it to you. Oh, and by the way, this is from 2008. So one would think if this was successful, if this, if this was the truth that we would all know about it by now, almost 15 years later, but here we go. The impact of freezing and toasting on the glycemic response of white bread. 10 healthy subjects. So I'm assuming not Diabetic? That's, that's an assumption. It doesn't tell me. Three male, seven female, aged 22 to 59 years, recruited from Oxford Brooks University and the local community. So there's not, aside from the age, a whole lot of information about our sample size, which is small. Ten participants, very small sample. A homemade white bread and a commercial white bread were administered following four different storage and preparation conditions. Fresh, so just plain fresh white bread, frozen and defrosted, again bread, toasted, and finally toasted following freezing and defrosting. All the subjects were administered randomized repeated measure design. So I like the fact that it's random because that way if the order that they were consuming any of these breads in would have an impact, that would kind of get washed out. I also like that it was repeated. That's, that's important in the measurement system analysis, that you have repeatability and reproducibility. However, I can tell you that 10 subjects testing twice on a measurement that is continuous data. So it's not discrete. It's not yes slash no or black slash white. It's along a scale. You are not going to pass a measurement system analysis with this. Furthermore, with just 10 data points, you are not going to get a 95% confidence interval on probably any of the statistical measures here. So, uh, especially standard deviation. I would like to know how much variation there was in this study, but I don't think you could even with 10 data points plot whether or not this data is distributed normally, like along a bell curve, or if it is somehow skewed. So we don't even know what the measure of central tendency is. Is it mean? Is it median? We don't know what the measurement of variability should be. Should it be standard deviation? Should it be interquartile range? Anyhow, I geek out on statistics. But what was measured? Incremental blood glucose, peak glucose response, and two-hour incremental area under the glucose response curve, also known as IAUC. This study does not let us know what the incremental blood glucose response was or the peak glucose response. It strikes me that those would be fairly important, but not included here. So the results that are presented are the IAUC for each of these four storage and preparation methods. And it appears that the lower the number, the better. And the lowest number occurred, it says significantly, lower when the bread was frozen, thawed, and toasted. I do kind of take exception with the term significantly because with only 10 data points, I don't think you can possibly claim statistical significance, just sample size wise. 
So now I am going to test this out on myself. I'm using a continuous glucose monitor, so I will be able to measure my glucose response continuously over the course of a two hour period. Now, you might be thinking, Steve, you were just throwing shade at this study for not being scientific, not being statistically significant, yet you're just one person testing on yourself. Isn't that even worse? Well, here's the difference. I'm not making a claim to be scientific. I have no agenda. I don't have a dog in this fight or a pony in this race. I truly, you know what, if this turns out to be true, if this works, great. That would be wonderful. It would be wonderful to be able to have toast with bacon and eggs and have this same bread that my wife is having that's $2 a loaf instead of some keto bread that's $5 or $10 a loaf. So I don't, I don't care. I don't care what the results are, whether it works or if it doesn't work. I just want to get to the bottom of this. So I've put a piece of bread in the freezer. That's going to go there overnight. Tomorrow I'll thaw that and toast it. But right now I'm going to try out the plain white bread. So here we go, one slice of plain white bread. It's interesting because I've been testing a lot of keto or low carb breads and you really, once you taste real bread, you kind of see or taste what's missing in those. Anyhow, I'm gonna finish this. I'll be back in two hours with my baseline. What is the impact of just a single slice of plain white bread? All right, let's see how this performed. <laughs> Not a big surprise. <laughs> it scored a two out of 10 on the level software. There was a 50 point spike in glucose and I was over the 110 threshold, which levels considers bad for 98 minutes. So let me see if there's anything that is scored worse than that. So that was a 50 milligram. Ooh, one thing. There's been one thing right here. This is when I was doing the resistant starch tests on rice and uh, had a 98 point spike. That's just, that's insane. So the bread, not as bad as that, but still definitely not good and not unexpected. The real test though is gonna be when I come back tomorrow and I try the frozen, thawed, then toasted bread. All right, I'm back. The bread has been thawed. The bread has been toasted. The bread is not buttered because I didn't see any reference to buttering the bread or the toast in that article from PubMed. Now, I have found in my experience testing various keto breads and other products that fat blunts a glucose response. So we shouldn't see any of that. Also, to keep things as scientific as possible within the constraints of, you know, what I got going on here, I am filming at almost the exact same time as I did yesterday. My blood glucose is stable. I am past the dawn effect. I'm in the 90s right now. So here we go. Toasted white bread, supposedly resistant. Oh wait, that would have been horrible had I not actually kicked off the software to start measuring this. So we'll do that, levels, snap a picture. I don't even recall the last time I had toasted white bread without anything on it. And now I know why. That's not, that is not delicious right there. But I'm gonna finish this and then I'll be back in a little over two hours and we'll see what my blood glucose did. All right, let's take a look at the results. All right, interesting. Levels scored this as a five. There was a 32 point rise in glucose which does constitute a spike by most people's definitions. It is not as bad though. So I'm surprised. I'm feeling a little bit less smug right now than I was earlier. There seems to be something to this, at least based on this one single experiment. However, 
it is still a spike. It is still a 32 point rise in glucose. So let's pull up the comparison feature in the level software. And first we'll take a look at the absolute values. So you can see the green line is the toasted resistant bread. So frozen, thawed, and toasted. The white line is just the plain white bread. And you can see I did start a little bit higher with my glucose reading with the uh, resistant bread. And it didn't go nearly as high, but let's, actually let's take a look at relative. So they both start at zero and then you can really see the difference. And yes, there is a difference. So like I said, I'm, I'm not feeling quite so smug in my attitude anymore. I, I admit this, there does seem to be something to this. Now, what I would ask though, to make me make this a little bit more scientific is if you, my viewers have tried this out, what were your results? Please let me know down in the comments below. Now I realized that I could do another test on this because everything I've ever done in terms of resistant starch testing, I have found that fat will blunt a glucose response. So I suspect that if I were to take this bread, freeze it, thaw it, toast it, add butter or make a ham and cheese sandwich or something like that, I would see an even smaller glucose response. I'm not gonna test it just because I, I pretty much know that's exactly what's gonna happen and I don't wanna keep eating white bread, if truth be told. So my thoughts on this whole method for creating a resistant starch bread, I'm a little bit conflicted, honestly. I think it's an, it's an interesting experiment and I was surprised at the results. I don't know that I feel that that means it should be part of a ketogenic way of eating though. That's, but that's my decision. I think if you are more strict on keto, you would definitely say it's not something you would eat. If you are less strict on keto than me, maybe this is something you can fit in to your lifestyle from time to time. If it doesn't knock you out of ketosis and if it doesn't cause inflammation. But I think my biggest takeaway is whenever you see any videos making some of these claims, it's worth testing out or at least digging into the research a little bit more before you just blindly jump on. And if there's any other final thing I would say, it's test yourself. These are my metrics. I mentioned this, I believe, at the beginning of the video. The results that I get when I'm doing glucose testing are my results. Yours may be different. So don't just blindly trust anyone, including me. Get yourself a glucose monitor, if not a continuous glucose monitor. There are cheap glucose monitors out on Amazon. I'll, uh, I'll link to whatever is the cheapest one I can find with the best reviews down in the description below. It's worth testing yourself as a baseline and then usually at about 30 minutes to see how rapidly a glucose response is occurring, if one is occurring. At an hour, that's generally when I find I peak. And again, at two hours, just to see what sort of recovery I made. But hopefully you found this video interesting. If you did, please click that like button. If you're not a subscriber already, tap that subscribe button, then hit the bell to turn on all notifications so you don't miss any of my videos. And if you'd like to help support the Serious Keto Test Kitchen, click that join button and see what memberships are all about. Thanks for watching.